This video was supported by an educational grant from Healthmark. Hello, I'm Corey Ofsted, and my team designs and conducts real-world studies. In this video, I'm daring you to probe your probes. Now, probes are reusable medical devices that are concerning to me because there's very little oversight of how they're processed and inspected between uses. As you may know, ultrasound probes are used for all kinds of procedures, with external probes being used literally from head to toe. And endocavitary probes put down people's throats or in their vaginas or rectums. The thing is that probes are used in nearly every department, and they're generally processed by the person who does the procedure, rather than going down to sterile processing. And that often doesn't cut it. Therefore, I'm encouraging you to take a close look at how probes are being used throughout your facility and see how comfortable you are with how they're being processed and inspected between patient uses. Now, from the outside, most probes look simple compared to things like flexible endoscopes and other complex surgical instruments, which may give you a false sense of security thinking that no special training or equipment is needed to clean and disinfect them. But some probes actually go inside people's bodies, like this transvaginal probe, and they're super fragile instruments that require special, special handling. They generally have a transducer lens, a handle, and a needle guide or notch that holds the needle in place during procedures. Now, personnel put gel on the transducer to transmit the sound waves, and probes used inside the body might also get covered with a condom or a sheath to prevent contamination. Now, just to be clear, the gel goes inside that sheath or condom, and sometimes on the outside of it too. Obviously, the sheath should be removed after use, and then you've got to get the gel off before you can clean it and disinfect it. You can watch our CE webinars on that if you'd like to learn more. In any case, the gel gets all over everything, like the blobs you can see on this cord and all over the probe. Now, it was supposed to be removed at the point of care, but it came down to decontam looking like this, with hardened gel on the surfaces and down inside the needle guide notches. Can you see the goo down in that hole? Well, it turns out that you can't get the gel out of those notches with a disinfectant wipe because they're just too deep. In this facility, the sterile processing techs clean them in a sink using detergent solution, sponges, and brushes, which gets the gel and other soil out of those notches. Now, getting them clean is really important because the evidence is clear. Transvaginal probes harbor a lot of germs, even when they're covered with a sheath during the procedure, with one study finding that 86% still had bacteria on them after a disinfectant wipe was used. With chlamydia DNA, that's an STD, on 20% of them, but 2% of it deemed to be infectious and HPV DNA on 13%, with about 7% being deemed infectious. Now, HPV is a virus that's been shown to cause cancer. So this is really scary. The thing is that personnel don't always use a sheath, and you end up with a bloody probe like this hanging off a cart in the emergency department. or you come upon a supposedly clean transrectal probe that was used for prostate biopsies. And it has something that, that looks a lot like poop in the grooves here. And it got on there because there was a condom, but the surgeon poked a needle through the condom to get the biopsies, which you may know tends to make the condom less effective. Now, Obviously, when there's blood and poop like this, 
there's a risk of infection transmission. And this is not just theoretical. We know of a case where a 53-year-old man got infected with hepatitis C during a prostate biopsy. Investigators found that reusable needle guides like this were used, and they had visible blood secretions and remains of mucosa on them after supposedly being processed. That's gross. And how did it happen? Well, investigators found that 36% of the sheaths had holes in them, which will do it. Just so you don't think this is only a problem with probes used inside the body, it's important to know that needles and other surgical instruments are commonly used with probes using, used for percutaneous procedures, like injections, biopsies, and drainage of fluid or pus. And those needles commonly touch or poke the probe. And being sharp as they are, they can go right through a sheath or a probe cover, like the plastic bag that's over this one, which leaves the transducers with gouges like this and cracks where the transducer cover has separated from the body of the probe, like this which is concerning because this type of damage makes the probes virtually impossible to clean and disinfect, and can also allow fluid and germ infiltration and impact the image quality. And that's a lose-lose situation for both the patients and the providers. Now, although the transducers are especially fragile, the body of the probe can also get cracked or chipped, like this, and these badly damaged probes are found in emergency departments or radiology units by a sterile processing manager who dared to take a look. Now let's take a look at a TEE probe, which stands for transesophageal echocardiogram. It looks like a flexible endoscope. The TEE probe gets threaded down the patient's throat and stays in their esophagus during cardiac surgeries, so doctors can monitor the heart and other structures inside the body. The distal ends of TEE probes have grooves like this along the body of the probe and also all along the transducer that get exposed to gel and blood during procedures. And these probes have caused outbreaks in several hospitals like a hospital in Iceland where 34 cardiac surgery patients were infected by TEE probes that harbored nasty germs and had damage that was only noticed by investigators when they used magnification to inspect the probes. Damaged probes can also cause injuries like this one reported to the FDA where the patient's throat actually got torn during the procedure, requiring emergency interventions to stop the bleeding. Unfortunately, the patient required blood transfusions, and the physician noticed that the probe was broken only after the procedure was complete. We think it's time to move the quality game upstream to prevent patient exposures and injuries like these. The thing is that most facilities skip doing any visual inspection at all and rely on disinfectant wipes like these to process ultrasound probes between patients. You may have noticed that there's a lot wrong with this picture, but let's focus on just one thing now. The top of the wipes container, which is open, and a wipe is sticking out the top. That lets the disinfectant evaporate, and it can dry out the wipes, which diminishes the possibility that they're going to be effective. That's why we weren't too surprised to read about a recent study that found wiping probes with paper towels only eliminated about 10% of the germs. And using disinfectant wipes wasn't a lot better, with only about 20% of the germs killed. You know what's really gross? Almost half of the probes still had a lot of bio burden on them after wiping with disinfectant wipes. Again, it wasn't much better than a paper towel. Given the situation, I don't think wipes are effective enough to use on probes that come into contact with mucous membranes or non-intact skin or sterile tissue. So what should be done with them? 
Well, our PROBES 201 CE webinar takes a deep dive into how things can be done in a centralized sterile processing unit that handles probes and scopes. In this situation, the cords are wiped down with disinfectant wipes, and then the probes are immersed in detergent solution, and they're thoroughly cleaned with a sponge before using a brush to get gunk out of those grooves and notches. Then they're rinsed in accordance with the instructions for use and dried with low linting towels. Now the techs also inspect every scope using lighted magnification. And they've noticed that the grooves and needle guide notches often harbor nasty stuff like I've shown you. Sometimes they use boroscopes like this to get a closer look or document damage or residual soil using the boroscope camera and software. Now this careful inspection every time allows them to identify damage like the gash they found on this transducer, which could leak out the oil in there or allow the HLD and other chemicals to leach into the inner surfaces because it's no longer intact. At the end of the day, I think there's hope for improving patient safety. If you dare to probe the situation by going visiting and observing probes in their natural habitats in your facility, so you can see the setup and materials used for processing. And taking a close look at the probes themselves using magnification with special attention to those transducers, grooves, and notches. And once you know the current state of things in your facility, then establish clear protocols and train everyone involved in probe use so they know how to process and inspect the probes before every use on every patient. For more information on this topic, you may watch our free CE webinars on ultrasound probes or our YouTube videos on tools to use for visual inspection. And here's a couple of articles that may be of interest. There are a lot more references for relevant material at the end of our CE webinars, if you're interested. We're grateful for input on this video and our CE webinars from experts in sterile processing and infection prevention, including Frank Daniels and Laurel Farabaugh as well as several others who preferred to remain anonymous. This video was supported by an educational grant from HealthMark. Please contact HealthMark directly for information about their products and educational services by visiting www.hmark.com. Thank you for watching this video, and we hope you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel and consider watching our CE webinars for more detailed information and examples. And here are our disclaimers.